Last year, NASA awarded, uh, let's say around $3 billion to SpaceX's massive lunar Starship lander. Remember the contract that happened that was not easy when Jeff Bezos and Blue Origin sued so many times? Meanwhile, SpaceX's Starship has had many changes over the years. Information about the HLS prototype, not so much. So, only in today's episode of Alpha Tech will we find out more about what NASA just revealed about Starship HLS's current status. In a presentation at the annual meeting of NASA's Lunar Exploration Analysis Group, or LEAG, here on August 23rd, Lisa Watson Morgan, manager of the Human Landing System program, said SpaceX has been a fantastic partner on HLS so far, with close cooperation between the company and the agency. SpaceX has been involved in the Artemis 3 landing site selection process to ensure potential landing regions are compatible with Starship. NASA, in turn, has its personnel, including astronauts, visiting SpaceX facilities for reviews and hardware tests. That includes one of the unique attributes of Starship, the elevator required to go from the crew cabin to the surface. It's a very tall lander. It doesn't look like the traditional landers that we've all seen in the past, so it can be hard to reconcile that mentally, Watson Morgan said. She assured scientists at the meeting that the elevator design was robust, saying it was multi-fault tolerant and designed for operating in lunar conditions. In his presentation, Kennedy showed images of a full-scale mock-up of the elevator that SpaceX built for crew-in-the-loop tests, including ones where astronauts wore simulated spacesuits to test the ability to get in and out out of the elevator. Back in 2021, in the national team's defense, SpaceX's elevator approach is also undeniably risky. And it's safe to say that demonstrated reliability would be an absolute necessity for NASA to ever accept that solution. Of course, SpaceX could feasibly include a hand-cranked backup system and a ladder on Starship's exterior in the event of total system failure, but both backups would still pose risks similar to or greater than the national team's ladder. However, the fact that SpaceX has already built and begun testing a Starship moon elevator prototype makes it hard to believe that the company couldn't ultimately produce a safe, reliable, redundant elevator between now and the mid to late 2020s. Besides that, earlier this year, NASA Artemis also checked out the airlock on HLS. An airlock, often abbreviated to just lock, is a compartment with doors that can be sealed against pressure and permits the passage of people and objects between environments of differing pressure or atmospheric composition while minimizing the change of pressure in the adjoining spaces and mixing of environments. The lock consists of a relatively small chamber with two airtight doors in series which do not open simultaneously. An airlock may be used for passage between environments of different gases or different pressures or both to minimize pressure loss or prevent the gases from mixing. All of this proves that SpaceX is doing very well in its responsibilities. However, to be fair, some aspects of the overall Starship lunar landing architecture remain unclear now. The concept of operations for the lander involves SpaceX launching a Starship into low Earth orbit that will serve as a fuel depot, which is filled by subsequent Starship launches that serve as tankers. The lunar lander Starship will then launch, fill its tanks at the depot, and head to lunar orbit. Neither NASA nor SpaceX, though, have said exactly how many launches will be required for a single Starship lunar landing mission, an issue of contention during protests of the SpaceX HLS award last year by Blue Origin. How many? However many is needed, that is how many will launch, Watson Morgan said. NASA's requirements for HLS missions end once the astronauts are returned to Orion. We don't tell them to do anything with it, Kennedy said, of the fate of the Starship lander after returning astronauts from the lunar surface. That's going to be up to SpaceX. In addition to updates on the status of Starship, NASA recently required that SpaceX is sending only a skeleton version of its lunar Starship spacecraft to the surface of the moon during an upcoming uncrewed test mission. It'll be so stripped down, in fact, that it won't even be required to demonstrate that it can take back off after after landing. For the uncrewed demo, the goal is to have a safe landing, Lisa Watson Morgan said. The uncrewed demo is not necessarily planned to be the same starship that you see for the crewed demo. It's going to be a skeleton because it just has to land. It doesn't have to take back off. Perhaps anticipating that her comments may stir some debate over whether SpaceX will actually be required to return astronauts safely, Watson Morgan added that clearly we want it to take off from the moon, but the requirements are for it to land. We don't tell them to do anything with it, Logan Kennedy, HLS surface lead at NASA, said at the event, referring to the Starship spacecraft once astronauts are returned from the moon's surface. 
that's going to be up to SpaceX. That uncrewed landing scheduled for no earlier than 2024 is a key test ahead of the crewed Artemis 3 mission. Watson Morgan said that the uncrewed landing will take place in the south polar regions of the moon, but no decisions have been made on a landing site, including whether it will be one of the 13 regions NASA announced on August 19th, which were considered for the Artemis 3 mission. One factor in choosing a landing site, she said, was to preserve science in the future by not disrupting any Artemis 3 landing sites. There will be an opportunity to do science on the uncrewed demo landing. That includes flying a suite of sensors and imagers, and potentially one payload, she said, but didn't specify what kinds of sensors or payloads might fly. The types of payloads NASA was interested in flying include those that don't require a tremendous amount of upkeep. However, she and others said they want to maximize the performance that Starship offers on lunar landings, with the potential to carry large payloads. While the original HLS competition had a requirement to carry only 100 kilograms of cargo to the surface and back in addition to two astronauts, said Kennedy, the later sustained missions will increase that to 182 kilograms to the surface and 160 kilograms back, with a goal of 1,000 kilograms down and back. We're going to leverage all that we can on this mission to try and take up and down as much as we can, using the size of their system, Watson Morgan said. After all, the Starship HLS remains an integral part of the NASA mission to return humans to the lunar surface. Not only will it take astronauts down to the lunar surface, but the HLS will also serve as their home there, at least at the beginning of the Artemis program. Eventually, the astronauts will build their own homes on the lunar surface, but at least at first, it will have to be capable of carrying all the tools, equipment, and supplies needed to complete any individual Artemis mission. To meet that milestone, that's a lot of rocket flights for a spacecraft that hasn't even left the ground yet, but it has NASA's backing and SpaceX's track record of pulling off seemingly impossible feats of rocketry with hopefully no more legal hurdles in its way, the public and private team behind the HLS can hopefully focus on their long-term goal, the moon. Are you excited for the Artemis missions? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Otherwise, that about wraps it up for today's episode. Please tell us how we did in the comments section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality content for viewers like you, and for that we thank you so much. From all of us here at Alpha Tech, we hope to see you again next time.